The Invader is one of the secret archetypes in Remnant 2. Unlocking it requires completing a specific set of steps, all of which will be covered in this guide. As a bonus, we will also be getting the matching armor set and several unique items along the way. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. In order to unlock the Invader archetype, we will need the Dreamcatcher melee weapon, so let's cover that first. The Dreamcatcher is obtained in the Low Som biome, specifically the version of it that begins in the Morrow Parish overworld location. If needed, I recommend re-rolling for this location in Adventure Mode so that you can keep your progress in Campaign Mode. Starting in Morrow Parish, you'll need to make your way through the overworld until you find the entrance to the sublocation with the exclamation mark over it. For me, that sublocation was Cotton's Kiln, however it could be a different location in your game such as the Great Sewers. As long as you see the exclamation mark over the entrance on your map, then you are on the right track. Once you've defeated the final boss in your respective sublocation, you'll be guided to an exit that leads to a new region of the Morrow Parish overworld. Make your way through this new region until you reach the Morrow Sanatorium checkpoint. We'll need to perform some key actions here, so follow closely. We'll start by entering the asylum on the second floor. We'll then need to get three stone carved dolls, the first of which is down on the first floor. Along the way, we can open up a door for a small shortcut. After grabbing the first stall, exit the room and turn left, moving through a hallway and down a flight of stairs to the basement. If you turn left at the massive webs, you'll reach a dead end where a simulacrum can sometimes be found. Just stay away from the metal grate in the wall to avoid being eaten. Going the other way, we'll make a quick stop at one of the cells on our right and duck through a hole in the wall to find the shock device amulet. Returning to the hall, the last cell on the left houses a prisoner, the apparent head doctor at the asylum. You can talk with her if you want, but it won't be productive to do so until later. For now, continue forward and climb the stairs that lead to the asylum's courtyard. We can quickly open a pair of doors to make a nice shortcut back inside, but before going back, we'll grab a second stone carved doll from the far corner of the courtyard. We'll also need to open up the shed, which will result in a small boss fight. Defeat the boss, then return to the shed and pick up the Asylum 3rd floor key. Next, we'll head back into the Asylum and make our way up to the 3rd floor. With the third floor key, we can now access this area. Weaving our way through, we'll first grab the third and final stone carved doll. Before going back downstairs, we'll find the broken window on the third floor and jump out onto a balcony. The prison cell key and potentially a simulacrum can both be found here. 
With that, we'll head back down to the basement where the prison cells are located. As a quick warning, these next steps should be performed in a specific order. First, speak with the head doctor through the door and select the I have something of yours option, followed by the are these your sculptures, give dolls option. This should remind her of an old song where four specific numbers are mentioned, those being 2, 9, 7, and 1. This will be useful to us in just a moment. For now, continue speaking with the doctor and make sure to ask her any questions you might have before picking the unlock the door option. I want to avoid showing and spoiling the moment you open the door, but you should be able to pick up the Nightweaver stone doll from within the cell after opening the door. With that in hand, we'll make our way back to the third floor of the asylum. Make a quick stop on the first floor in the room that contains a combination locked safe. You can enter the number combination from the head doctor's song, 2971, to unlock the safe, gaining access to the double barrel shotgun inside, which is a handgun class weapon. From there, we'll move all the way back up to the third floor and this time we'll need to go all the way to the end of it. Once there, a magic door will appear, and this should always lead to the Namue's Retreat sublocation. Keep moving forward until you reach Namue and then speak with her. She offers special crafting services, but for now, we just need to speak with her until the I'm ready, send me to the Nightweaver's Hunting Grounds option can be picked. Selecting that option will send us to a second overworld location, the Forsaken Quarter. Once again, you'll need to make your way through the overworld until you reach a sublocation entrance that has an exclamation mark over it on the map. This can lead to different sublocations depending on procedural generation. For me, the sublocation that was chosen was the Gilded Chambers, but don't be alarmed if it's a different location in your game. After defeating the final boss in your respective sublocation, a waypoint should appear, leading to an exit. In addition, on your way to the exit, you should encounter a wraith feeding on a corpse. Approaching will cause her to wail and flee, leaving behind the Soul Key Tribute quest item. Pick it up, then go through the exit. You'll find yourself back on the first floor of the asylum in a previously inaccessible room. Open the nearby door and make your way back down into the basement. We can now interact with the bundle of webs and use the Soul Key Tribute. This will open the webs, which we can then interact with again to be transported to a new location, the Tormented Asylum. This is where the final boss of this entire biome is encountered, but before fighting it, find and enter the open prison cell containing more webs. Finally, interact with the webs and offer up the Nightweaver Stone Doll to be rewarded with the Dreamcatcher melee weapon. Now that we have the Dreamcatcher, we can move on to the final stages of unlocking the Invader archetype. We'll first need to reach the Root Earth biome, which is only accessible in campaign mode after defeating the final boss in each of the other three biomes. In short, it is the final major area of the game. The first section of Root Earth is the Ashen Wasteland, and although we will still have to get past it to get the Invader Archetype, 
we can snag the invader's armor set and three other nearby uniques as we progress. Near a corner in that first open space of the Ashen Wastelands, look for a small opening into a building. Duck beneath it and head to the upper floors. Perform a series of jumps and then drop into a small secluded area to find the Reaping Stone Ring. Next, retrace your steps back to the top floor, but don't drop down into the secluded area. Instead, jump from the top floor down to a concrete wall, and aim towards the tangent wall of the building so that you don't roll off. You can then walk down into another secluded area where both the Steel Katana and Dendroid armor set can be obtained. Finally, near the end of this first area is a semi-truck within a raised and cracked area of ground. There is a specific spot where you can climb up to the raised area and then beneath the truck you'll find the Hellfire handgun. From here, you'll have to proceed through the Ashen Wasteland and face a gauntlet of tough enemies and bosses. Eventually, you'll reach the second major area of Root Earth, the Corrupted Harbor. Once more, you'll need to either defeat or run past many tough enemies to reach the first checkpoint, which is located inside a dilapidated cargo ship. From that checkpoint, head down the stairs and enter through a fog wall into an arena-like room. You'll need to defeat all the enemies in this room before proceeding. Once you've done that, locate a small archway that leads out of the ship. Follow the path into a clearing with a root growth in the center. There's an amulet here, but before picking it up, make sure the Dreamcatcher is equipped, then perform a melee attack on the root growth. This should result in an interaction that gives you the Walker's Dream consumable. If you're playing co-op, your other party members will also need to use their own Dreamcatcher on the root growth to get the Walker's Dream consumable for themselves. At this point, a group of enemies will spawn in to ambush you, defeat them, then grab the Escalation Protocol amulet from the root growth. Even in co-op, only one player needs to do this next step. Go to your inventory and assign the Walker's Dream consumable to a Quick Select hotkey. Then close the menu and use the Walker's Dream item via Quick Select. This will transport you and any other party members to a new area, the Twilight Veil. Here, you'll need to defeat a boss-type enemy, Bane. Upon success, both the Supercharger Mutator and the Wooden Ship Archetype material will be added to your inventory. Finally, return to Ward 13 and speak with Wallace. There, you can trade in the Wooden Shiv, 10 Luminite Crystals, and 1000 Scrap to obtain the Serrated Root Blade. All that's left is to go to the Archetype tab in the Game menu and equip it, which will give you the Invader Archetype. In addition, when making a new character, you will now have the option of picking Invader as your starting archetype. If you want to see more great guides, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day if you're here today, have a great Tuesday, and as always, thanks for watching.